cool, let's do this. Question 21. You are designing an Azure Stream Analytics solution that will analyze Twitter data. You need to count the tweets in each 10 second window. The solution must ensure that each tweet is counted only once. So, so the suggested solution is you use a tumbling window and you set the window size to 10 seconds. Well, yeah, I think every time I see like each whatever second window, I immediately think of tumbling window. So no arguments from me here. So does this meet the goal? Yes. Question 22. You're designing an Azure stream. Oh, so the same question, right? But the suggested solution is now you use a session window that uses a timeout size of 10 seconds. Well, session windows are for grouping events that happen at a similar time together. Um, well, very roughly speaking anyway. Um, that's not really what we're looking for here. So does this meet the goal? I'm sorry, but no. Question 23. You use Azure Stream Analytics to receive data from Azure Event Hubs and to output the data to an Azure Blob Storage account. You need to output the count of records received from last 5 minutes every minute. Which windowing function should you use? So the key phrase here is this one, right? Um, last 5 minutes every minute. So which which means that there is a some sort of overlap between those windows. So we can rule out the tumbling window there. Session window, like we were saying before, we, we're not looking for events happening at a similar time, so we can rule that out. And we can rule out sliding window as well. Um because it it looks it alerts you when there is like a certain fixed number of events happening at a certain fixed number um certain fixed uh certain certain window so we can rule that out as well and hopping window is the solution here with the five uh five minute window size and the one minute hopping size question twenty four you configure version control for an Azure Data Factory instance as shown in the following exhibit use the drop down menus to and um we'll come back to this if we need to use the drop down menus to select the answer choice that um cool so uh, arm templates for the pipeline assets are stored and so i know that by default the arm templates are stored in the pub publish branch so the correct answer there is adf publish and the second blank says a data factory arm template named contoso sales can be found in so that one there will be stored in the repository name, publish branch, and Contoso sales. So the correct answer will be that one there, I believe. Question 25. You are designing an Azure Stream Analytics solution that receives instant messaging data from, Azure, from an Azure Event Hub. You need to ensure that the output from the Stream Analytics job counts the number of messages per time zone every 15 seconds. How should you complete the stream analytics query? So every 15 seconds, so again there's it's like a w window of 15 seconds that's not overlapping. So immediately I think tumbling window in there somewhere. Um, and the way syntax wor that works is we use timestamp by um, with this other syntax. So timestamp by tumbling window there. Question 26. You have an Azure Data Factory instance named ADF1 and two Azure Synapse Analytics workspaces named WS1 and WS2. ADF1 contains the following pipelines. P1 uses a copy activity to copy data from non-partitioned table in a dedicated SQL pool of WS1 to an Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 account. P2 uses a copy activity to copy data from text delimited files in an Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 account to a non partitioned table in a dedicated SQL pool of WS2. You need to configure P1 and P2 to maximize parallelism and performance. Which data set settings should you configure for the copy activity of each pipeline? 
So one of the main differences between P1 and P2 is that for P1, uh, Azure Synapse Analytics workspace uh, is used as the source of the data, whereas P2 uh, is used as the sync of the data. So when, when that's used as a source of the data, there are mainly two things that to look out for. Is the is the table that we are um, copying over is that partitioned or non-partitioned? If it's partitioned, we use a um, partition option to physical partition. Whereas if it's not partitioned, we use the partition option to dynamic range. So the answer is the first first question there, first blank there, and P two. So again, the for this one now the sync is the Azure Synapse Analytics workspace. For that one, I think there's th yeah, there are three options. So there's bulk, polybase, and copy statement. And Microsoft recommends you use either polybase or copy statement when whenever you can. Um, and here text delimited files is you there's something that you can use with polybase. So yeah, so that those two will be the answer there. Yeah, the option there is the last one. Question twenty seven. You have an Azure storage account that generates two hundred thousand new files daily. The file names have a format of dates and customer ID dot CSV. You need to design an Azure Data Factory solution that will load new data from the storage account to an Azure Data Lake once hourly. The solution must minimize load times and costs. How should you configure the solution? And we have to answer for the load methodology as well as trigger. So we need to load new data from new data hourly, right? So it's either fixed schedule or tumbling window. And the main difference, I mean, there are some main differences there, but one of the main difference between them is I think for this we can technically use fixed schedule but I know that fixed schedule is more appropriate when we want to run it at, at like say like more like like a specific given time like maybe we, we want to run it like every 1 p.m. on Thursdays or something like that and you know technically we can also use tumbling window for that but that's more for fixed schedule and in this case, when we want to run run something once hourly or and like once every you know um, some interval, what what we want to use is tumbling window. Um, so I will go with the tumbling window trigger there. And in in terms of minimizing costs and load times, like in 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 Azure in general to optimize the performance there what we want to do is instead of having li a lot of little files we want to have few bigger files so here we the load methodology should be incremental load so there will be the option there that I would choose a long question here question 28 you plan to create an Azure Databricks workspace that has a tiered structure the workspace will contain the following three workloads. A workload for data engineers who will use Python and SQL. A workload for jobs that will run notebooks that use Python, Scala, and SQL. A workload that data scientists will use to perform ad hoc analysis in Scala and R. The enterprise architecture team at your company identifies the following standards for Databricks environments. The data engineers must share a cluster the job cluster will managed by will be managed by using a request process whereby data scientists and data engineers provide packaged notebooks for deployment to the cluster. All the data scientists must be assigned their own cluster that terminates automatically after 120 minutes of inactivity. Currently, there are three data scientists. You need to create the Databricks cluster for the workloads. So the suggested solution is you create a standard cluster for each data scientist, a standard cluster for the data engineers, 
and the high concurrency cluster for the jobs. So this question is about Databricks, clus Databricks cluster modes, right? So there are three Databricks cluster modes, standard, uh, high concurrency, and single node. Single node and standards are very similar. Um, so we're going to ignore single node here. I mean, it's not in the question anyway, so we can ignore that. So comparing the standard and high concurrency, um, there are a few differences there. Standard is mainly, f I mean, standard is for, is for single users only, whereas for high concurrency, is more for collaboration work. Standard, the supported languages are Scala, R, Python, and SQL, whereas high concurrency is all that except Scala. And also, um, the standard cluster mode supports uh, all termination. I think the default is 120 minutes, and but high concurrency doesn't support auto termination there. So let's have a look at the suggested solution, right? So each data scientist, you create a standard cluster. So data scientists use um, Scala and R. Yep, yep. So it, it checks out, it checks out. And data scientists must be assigned their own cluster that terminates automatically after 120 minutes of inactivity. So that the first that's the first one's good. The second one says a standard cluster for the data engineers. Data engineers use Python and SQL. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. The data engineers must share a cluster. So to share a cluster, I would recommend high concurrency, right? It's not that I would recommend that you have to use high concurrency. So does this meet the goal? I would say no. You have the following Azure Data Factory pipelines. Ingest data from System 1. Ingest data from System 2. Populate dimensions. Populate facts. Ingest data from System 1 and ingest data from System 2 have no dependencies. Populate dimensions must execute after ingest data from System 1 and ingest data from System 2. Populate facts must execute after populate dimensions pipeline. All the pipelines must execute every 8 hours. What should you do to schedule the pipelines for execution? Um, so let's go through the options here. Add an event trigger to all four pipelines. So we want to trigger these events every 8 hours, right? It's not really event trigger is more like if there's a like a triggering event. We're not really looking for that. So we can get rid of that. Add a scheduled trigger to all four pipelines. Well that's kind of tricky because um we know that populate dimensions must execute after some other pipelines, right? So when we add a schedule to trigger to all of those pipelines, they're gonna all try to run at once, and um, in that case, we can't really set it so that um, one pipeline runs after other pipelines. So we'll get rid of that question, that option there as well. Create a patient. I I think that should be parent. Create a parent pipeline that contains the four pipelines and use a schedule trigger. Yeah, I th that's exactly what you need to do. Um, and just for the just for the sake of com completeness, create a pa parent pipeline that contains the four pipelines and use an event trigger. Yeah, we don't want to use an event trigger, so the correct answer here is the third one. Question 30, you're responsible for providing access to an Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 account. Your user account has contributor access to the storage account and you have the application ID and ac access key. You plan to use Polybase to load data into an enterprise data warehouse in Azure Synapse Analytics. You need to configure Polybase to connect the data warehouse to a storage account. Which three components should you create in sequence? So 
I actually haven't done something like this uh, hands-on before, but so I just kind of had to remember this for the certificate. So I know that it's um, a database scoped credential, uh, an external data source, and an external file format. So the first option there. Question 31. You are building an Azure Stream Analytics job to retrieve game data. You need to ensure that the job returns the highest scoring record for each 5 minute time interval of each game. What, how should you complete the Stream Analytics query? Because the highest scoring record, right? So for that, um, and then let the query is given there. Um, so it it again says each five minute time interval um, and every time I see like each some time interval I think tumbling window so I think that kind of answers the it, it, it answers the second second question there second blank over there um, so the first blank select uh, collect score we're looking for the highest score and we don't want to just collect it. Collect top one over order by score description. We want to also group by the group by each game, so that's not the correct answer there either. Select game max score. Well, in, in that one, yeah, right idea, but there is no really um, group by going on there. So the and and. So the last one should be um, should should be the answer. Let's confirm that top one, promising because we're looking at the highest scoring record, over partition by game order by score, and it's as a decreasing order. So yeah, that's exactly what we want. And so the correct answer here is top one and tumbling. Question thirty two. You have an Azure Data Lake storage account that contains a staging zone. You need to design a daily process to ingest incremental data from the staging zone. Transform the data by executing an R script and then insert the transformed data into a warehouse in Azure Synapse Analytics. Suggested solution is you use an Azure Data Factory schedule trigger to execute the pipeline that copies the data to a staging table in the data warehouse and then use this uh, stored procedure to execute the R script. Uh, so for this, with the stored procedure, we can really only run SQL scripts. Um, yeah, in order, with the R script, I think we have to involve Azure Databricks somehow. So does this meet the goal? I would say no. Question 33, so that's, this question here, um, I'm so glad I don't have to read it again. So this question here is the same as that. Um, is that question that with the data engineers, jobs, and data scientists, right? But I'm guessing the suggested solution is different. You create a high concurrency cluster for each data scientist, a high concurrency cluster for the data engineers, and the standard cluster for the jobs. So high concurrency cluster for each data scientist. Um, so we see that a workload that data scientists will use to perform ad hoc analysis in Scala and R. And remember when I said high concurrency uh, has all the cap, you know, like in terms of the programming languages, is exactly the same as standard except R, except Scala. So from from the first part of this, I can already say no, this does not meet the goal. Question 34, you are designing an Azure Databricks cluster that runs user-defined local processes. You need to recommend the cluster configuration that meets the following requirement. Minimize query latency, maximize the number of users that can run queries on the cluster at the same time, reduce overall costs without compromising other requirements. Which cluster type should you recommend? So we see here that we have to maximize the number of users that can run queries on the cluster at the same time. 
So, you know, suggesting that there is going to be more than a single user. So we can get rid of all the options with the standard cluster mode. So it's still one of the middle two. Um, so the difference is, is, that high, is that high concurrency with auto scaling or high concurrency with auto termination. I would say to minimize query latency and reduce overall costs, I would say auto scaling because if there is a you know high demand, we need to scale up. We scale up, and if there is less demand, we need to scale down. We we need to scale down. So I would I would go for that. Question thirty five. You are building an Azure Data Factory solution to process data received from Azure Event Hubs and then ingest into an Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 container. The data will be ingested every 5 minutes from devices into JSON files. The files have the following naming pattern. Device dates, device ID, and followed by dates with, uh, with a minute added onto that as well. You need to prepare the data for batch data processing so that there is one data set per hour per device type. The solution must minimize read times. How should you configure the sync for the copy activity? And we need to answer for the parameters, naming pattern, and copy behavior. Um, so with this kind of questions, I always tackle the easiest answers first, right? So um we so the data is the data will be ingested every 5 minutes but we need to prepare the data for batch data processing one data set per hour per device type So what we want to do is we have all these files in minutes, but we want to merge them all together. So copy behavior should be merge files. Uh, and looking at the naming pattern, uh, there is um, so we can we see here that. We can get rid of the second one because the granularity of it does not include ours. So we can get rid of that. And similarly, similarly, we can get rid of the third one as well because the granularity of it does not include device type. Um, remember, it's one data set per hour per device type, right? So it's either the first one or the fourth one. And if we think about so if, if there are like two folder structures that could be the answer, you think about how many folders it's going to create. So with the first one, device ID, so per device ID, every hour there be a there's a new file there. Um so Yeah, so every hour there's a new file there. Okay, compared to the last one, every hour, so yeah, the first one, every hour there's a new file for each device ID. Also, I just, yeah, and I, I just noticed that um, the last one says, the first one says device ID, and the last one says device type. Um, so yeah, we know that it's, it should be the last one then because it's one data set per hour per device type rather than device ID. But even if they said device type um, for the first one, I think it should still be the fourth one because um, yeah, so first one, if they said device type for per every device type uh, for each hour there will be a new new file there whereas this one for div per device type per hour there is an only one new file so that would make more sense and in terms of the parameter hmm. 
the correct syntax for the parameter is should be at trigger so we can get rid of the first two options so it's the last two there uh, so that it, where it says trigger outputs window start time that's for um that's for um tumbling window trigger and the second one is for the fixed schedule trigger hmm yeah so this is <laughs> this is when it gets a little bit controversial okay <laughs> um so I know that the answer on this Udemy question the answer says it should be this one the where it should be the fixed fixed schedule trigger but to me to me I think it should be the window start time but if we go down here uh we see that we see that 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 will be the answer because merge files and the correct uh file name and file directory um but only given we're only given the fixed schedule option there but yes if i had a choice i would go for the um window start time but it is what it is question 36 you're designing an azure data lake storage gen 2 structure for telemetry data from 25 million devices distributed across seven key geographical regions each minute the devices will send a json payload of metrics to Azure event hubs. You need to recommend a folder structure for the data. The solution must meet the following requirements. Data engineers from each region must be able to build their own pipelines for the data of their respective region only. The data must be processed every, at least once every 15 minutes for inclusion in Azure Synapse Analytics serverless SQL pools. How should you recommend completing the structure? and looking at the values device id minute hour day month year so we we'll probably get rid of the second one there because we all, we want to go from big to small never from small to big region id slash device id maybe uh region id slash role yeah i would get rid of that one as well because yeah, raw, like saying raw data is more general than region ID um, folder. So get rid of that one as well. Um, two similar ones, dates with out minutes, date with minutes. And looking at our requirements, the data must be processed at least once every 15 minutes for inclusion in Azure Synapse Analytics serverless SQL pools. So we need the minute granularity there. Raw device ID and raw region ID. Um, so this one's saying raw device ID suggests that that card there might be early on in the in the data folder, but we see here that there are 25 million devices. So if we had that, there will be so many folders, and this there wouldn't be the best practice. So we will probably get rid of that as well. In fact, I think the first card should be raw region ID. Um, there are seven key geographical regions and data engineers from each region must be able to build their own pipeline. So uh, there's a benefit to having that. Um, and after that would be the dates, uh, the one that with the minutes. And finally, device ID all in the same folder. So there will be this one would be the answer. Question 37. You are implementing an Azure Stream Analytics solution to process event data from devices. The devices output events when there is a fault and emit a repeat of the event every 5 seconds until the fault is resolved. The devices output a heartbeat event every five seconds after a previous event if there are no faults present. A sample of the events is shown in the following table. 
you need to calculate the uptime between the faults. How should you complete the stream analytics, analytics SQL query? Yep, so I've told you before that I've already done this test and I think this is uh, one of the controversial ones because I know what the answer is. Well, what this question says what the answer is, but um, I disagree with the answer. So let's go through it. Um, so select device ID, it gets the minimum event time, gets the maximum event time, and computes the difference in seconds. From input timestamp by event time, and gets grouped. So it's the where statement first, and then gets grouped by device ID. Um, So if you look at the options here, um, I think first thing to first thing that's pretty straightforward to get rid of is is having date diff second. So this is saying like group by device ID where um, date uh, the minimum and maximum event time is greater than five, but we know that the m whether it fails, the next event fails or succeeds, that's not going to happen. So w we can get rid of that option. Um, and so th it leaves us with session window. Is it session window or is it tumbling window? To me, it, it, it seems fitting that it's a tumbling window because uh because we look at i think it's it's better we look at every 5 second window interval and then if we selected um th then i guess the next question is what what should be the first blank then um it's for that I would look at choosing hmm actually I thought I was sure about this question but I'm not sure anymore um, so so the first one will choose just the heartbeat events so all the successful events and tumbling window so that wouldn't then calculate the it wouldn't really detect when there is a fault there if we chose lag event type so we look and then over limit duration second 5 so last event that happened within 5 seconds and that's whatever the event type was isn't the same as the current event type so th that would only happen if there is a failure or there was a failure and there is and it succeeds again so I don't think mm, I don't I'm not sure if that really works there either I wanted to say that would be an an the answer I would say um, where is first second five um, so that wouldn't really be relevant there. Um, so maybe it is the suggested answer. So suggested answer is where event type is heartbeat and session window second five, um, the se session window option there. Um, yeah, so I think the, the only problem with that for me is that five second there I don't know if that or the five oh yeah the five second there I don't know if that includes that five second mark so if there is it happens exactly at five second mark I don't know if it um if that happens but I would say yeah and no, actually I agree with the solution reading it again um I do think that's the most likely option anyway my bad guys question 38 you're creating a new notebook in Azure Databricks, they will support R as the primary language, but
but will support Scala and SQL. Which switch should you use to switch between languages? Uh, uh, have you guys used Azure Databricks before? Because this is like a really common thing to do on there. So um, the percentage sign is, is the one to go. Question 39. You have an Azure Data Factory pipeline that performs an incremental load of source data to an Azure Data Lake storage Gen 2 account. Data to be loaded is identified by a column named last updated date in the source table. You plan to execute the pipeline every four hours. You need to ensure that the pipeline execution meets the following requirements. Automatically retries the execution when the pipeline run fails due to concurrency or throttling limits. Supports backfilling existing data in the table. Which type of trigger should you use? So we need to execute the pipelines every four hours, right? So we can get rid of the event trigger. Event trigger is when there's a triggering event, but we're looking at just uh, triggering every four hours. On-demand trigger is the manual trigger. We don't want to do that manually. So it's either schedule or tumbling window. Um, those two are very. Those two triggers work in very similar, in a very similar way, but the the main differences are is that tumbling window supports um, the retrials as well as backfilling, whereas the schedule triggers don't. So the answer, correct answer here is tumbling window. Last question of this this part series. Question 40, you are designing a solution that will copy Parquet files stored in an Azure Blob Storage account to an Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 account. The data will be loaded daily to the data lake and will use a folder structure of year, month, day. You need to design a daily Azure Data Factory data load to minimize the data transfer between the two accounts. Which two configurations should you include in the design? So we want to design it in a way such that the m it minimizes the data, data transfer between the two accounts. So what we want to do is we have a folder structure in the destination in such a way that we can just pick out the latest change in the source and then only move those ones and put it in the correct folder there. So the correct answer here is specify a file naming pattern for the destination. Yes, we will need that. Delete the files in the destination before loading the data. That's unnecessary, as well as we don't want to do that. Filter by the last modified date of the source files. Yes, we want to do that. Delete the source files after they are copied. They would be, they, they wouldn't really meet the requirements of minimizing the data transfers, and yeah, there would be an extra work I would say. Next question, so yeah, we'll do the remaining ten questions in the next part, and for now, let's finish test and see what we got. So looks like we've got it all correct. Reviewing questions. Yep, yep. There's there are no uh, incorrect questions, so there we go. Sweet. Thank you, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. We were super successful in this part. I hope you are finding this format quite useful. I'm having a lot of fun doing this let's solve type of format rather than what we were doing before. Let me know if you find this format helpful as well. Uh, maybe you find the other format way better, but. Thank you very much for watching guys and see you in part 3. Also, I forgot to say, if you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys, we got this.